Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff. We are going to be making ourselves a sofa table today. We made the coffee table for in front of the couch in the den. Now we're going to make a sofa table for behind the couch in the den. We're going to use up some more of this wood that I said that we got to keep using. And uh, I don't know what it's going to do. Is it going to be another one of these experimental things? Hopefully it turns out better than the coffee table. But we'll see. I'm going to use one of these slabs of maple for the top. I'm going to use some of this, I think it's Philippine mahogany uh, for the legs and figure out some, some for the stretchers out of the wood that we've got. Uh, and I have an idea to try my first ever dovetails in a somewhat low risk situation on a project. Because I want to try my first dovetails on a project so that there's like, you know, something at stake for screwing it up. Because if I'm just doing like there, fly. If I'm just doing like practice dovetails, I don't have to actually try that hard, right? If I'm doing them on a project, I gotta pay attention, I gotta focus. So I'm gonna do, I, I think I have an idea about how to do that in a fairly low risk way with possibly a secret compartment in the uh, sofa table. So let's get some wood down. Let's uh, figure out what the hell we're doing, because <laughs> I, I really don't know. Other than putting a top on some legs, I'm not sure. All right, sofa table, right on. So we start by getting the piece of maple down for the top that is obviously the bottom piece of maple from the stack, because that's where you keep the wood that you want, apparently. Uh, then I used my big, long uh, level to get a straight edge and measured I want to say about 12 and a half inches. I was basically trying to get as much wood out of this thing as I could. And that's how wide my uh, sofa tabletop was going to be. It was going to be based on how much wood I can get out of this piece of wood. Uh, cut one edge straight-ish with a jigsaw and then take my hand plane to it because I was not happy with the way my uh, planer was working these days. Uh, so, And I just needed to get it straight enough to run against my bandsaw fence to cut the other side. Um, as long as it ended up relatively straight when it all was said and done, it was good enough for me. Skip plane to see what kind of uh, what kind of wood I'm working with and how much I need to take off. I didn't show, I did uh, take a hand plane to bits of it to try and thin out the areas because it was fairly twisted. I ended up it was about a five quarter piece of maple that I had to take all the way down to about five eighths of width to get it flat enough to use as a tabletop. Uh, then I taped up the uh, underside of the slab and filled the cracks with some West Systems epoxy. Uh, then I had to use a barbecue lighter to uh, heat the epoxy so it sinks down into the cracks and uh, pops the bubbles. And I gotta say, I did that Oof, I filled those cracks maybe three times plus uh, sanding in between and I always had little gaps left over and I was just I, it was my first epoxy crack fill and uh, yeah I should have grabbed a new piece of wood and just made a different top for it but whatever and we're starting on the legs this is that uh, chunk of Philippine mahogany uh, eight quarter that I just ripped into squares and then uh, yeah, fired them through the planer to get them all the same width as height. Wait, but the, yeah, to make them square. Uh, then I picked the, uh, the faces that I wanted, the pieces of the wood that I wanted out of those strips, and got them cut to length. You can see, I've got a little stop block on my fence over there because um, you don't want to cross cut. Crot, good talking. You don't want to cross cut against the fence anyway. Then uh, for the rails or aprons, I guess, I'm using some pieces of the African mahogany that I used on my coffee table, which is another build on my channel. It's one of my earlier builds on the channel. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description if you're interested. This is like a five-part series of me building a coffee table. And then we get up on the ladder, a little step ladder thing, because these aprons are almost six feet long. so. I had to take a couple of steps up and I put a little spacer on my uh, router fence. You'll see why in a minute because, well, I can just tell you actually. Well, no, here, let's talk about this. Then I just eyeballed the uh, <laughs> how wide I, or how long I wanted the 
end aprons um, and cut those to length. And I went back over and routed the mortises in those too. Uh, yeah, I think they were uh, maybe five inches long. They weren't very long. It's a long, skinny piece of uh, furniture, that's for sure. And then, yeah, wrote the mortises. So that little spacer that you can see sticking out there is uh, the offset that I want on the legs from the aprons. So once I get the leg up in the vise, I can take that spacer block off the router, and then I've got the exact relief that I want between the apron and, uh, and the leg. Then you can round over a piece of the uh, tenon stock and get a bunch of tenons cut out on the bandsaw. Um, eight tenons you need, obviously, for four legs. And uh, then we can do a test fit. Yeah, they all go in there and uh, get them all loaded up. I wanted to kind of put it together and see what if I was still happy with the dimensions and stuff. So I just did a, a dry fit of the non-sculpted parts to get an idea of what the finished size of the thing was going to be and that's what we're looking like uh, it's, it's an awkward looking piece of furniture if you've never made a sofa table it that's what it's supposed to look like believe it or not like as you're going along you're like wait a minute is this seriously what this thing is supposed to look like and it is I'll show you at the end um, then I drew a little curve on the aprons with a piece of scrap wood and cut those out uh, transferred that curve to the other leg, cut that one out so they're approximately the same. They don't really need to be identical because you'll never see them both together. I mean, but and then uh, I marked out just because I can be an idiot, and so can everybody else do this. Do this. Mark the, uh, the sides of the legs you're gonna taper because um, even with mortises on them, you never know. And I marked out the tapers. And took them over to the bandsaw, cut one side off, taped it back on so that my line was back where I could see it, and uh, cut out the other side and you got your taper. I've done this before, I've done this in other videos, you've probably seen this in other people's videos too. Then I fared the curve with my uh, oscillating belt sander thing on uh, the legs and aprons and stuff, and I sanded everything up to, uh, I want to say about 150? No, maybe I went all the way. Actually, I pre-finished on this one, so I did go. I went all the way to 240 with the sanding. Um, no, I wouldn't have done that before I glued it up, did I? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, and then I'm using, I want to say teak oil or tongue oil. Some kind of Watco product um, that's relatively easy to apply and didn't need to be super protective. It's not in a high traffic area. It's not a high use item, so I just did a couple of coats of either teak or tongue oil, I don't remember. Uh, maybe we'll see it when I'm doing the top, actually. We, we might see it in the frame. And then <laughs> and then we'll both learn together what I used. Um, and they hung the legs up, like I, I learned from Matthew Cremona, that you wanna hang things to finish them so you can get it all four sides when it's possible. So I did that. Then uh, this is my first time using these little tabletop attacher clip things. So I did a test fit on a couple of scrap blocks to make sure I had my fence in the right place for them. And then I could cut all the aprons with the little notch um, to accept these little, I guess they're called S-clips, are they? I don't know what they're called. I went into the, the hardware store and I was like, I need the things that you attach to a tabletop and they slid into the little slots and to keep it so you, it can expand and contract. And they were like, oh, these things. And I said, yeah, okay. And then I used the epoxy, the West Systems epoxy, to get it all glued up to give myself some time because I knew this clamping situation was going to be a hassle. I actually don't have anything long enough to clamp those sides, so I had to clamp clamps to other clamps. Um, but it, it held. It, it held together. That's all you need to do. And then I beveled, uh, I tilted the table saw fence to, I want to say about 30 degrees or so um, to do the edge of the tabletop as a profile, I, I thought that would be that would be nice just to give it a little bit of a bevel instead of doing some fancy like edge treatment. And uh, I couldn't do it on the table saw with going the length what, the width ways? Whatever. You know what I mean. So I got the chop saw out. I don't get the chop saw out very often. I actually almost sold it a little while ago. 
because of how infrequently I use it, but I guess there's a reason I kept it around. And then a whole bunch of hand sanding. I just, uh, it was late and neighbors were all asleep, and so I decided to hand sand the whole thing up to whatever. Oh, what did that say? What did that say? I don't know. Anyway, this is a, I, I, I'm still not happy that I used this piece of wood because of the hassle that it was, but it did turn out pretty. I'll give it that. Um, yeah, wiped it all in, did a couple more coats on the top, and then I attached it with the little, whatever the, those clips are called, and uh, we're all done. I think. Oh, no, then we buffed it with my new buffer that I got for my birthday. All right, then we're done. I think that I had some, like, oil wax that I wanted to buff into the top, the Howard's Feed and Wax stuff. Yeah, cool. All right, so that's the new sofa table. Uh, basically, pretty relatively simple construction. Uh, pretty much the same as the outdoor benches that I made, actually, just with nicer wood. And uh, unfortunately, uh, an unfortunate top is the only way I'm going to put it. Uh, I should have pulled the plug on that top way early in the process and not fought with it all the way through. And it looks cool. I'm pleased with how it came out. But man, yeah, I would have been a lot better off just taking a fresh piece of wood and cutting it into a rectangle and putting it on top of that. Um, but it is what it is. I uh, I got a cool piece of furniture out of it. And I know I said I was going to be doing some dovetails on this one for the first time. And I am, actually. The, the sofa table itself is done. But I am going to be installing a secret compartment in the sofa table in an upcoming video and uh, that's where I will try my dovetails and because it is a secret hidden compartment it won't matter if I screw them up because you won't see them unless you go digging for that secret compartment anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the uh, sofa table I am going to enjoy having it in the den and uh, we'll see you next time when I'm making something else actually when I'm making a secret compartment drawer box situation for the sofa table that's when i'll see you next time unless i do something else in between now and then but you get it